dimensions. Now, how, how prevalent is asthma? Well, about one in 10 in the US population has asthma. It's incredibly common, incredibly common. If we look at other important aspects, there is at least, at least, three point, at least 3.3 million children, 9.1 million who have uncontrolled asthma. That's an incredible number. That really relates to 50% of healthcare dollars to treat asthma are aimed at that population. So, huge medical problem, big prevalence, we need new therapies. Now, when we talk about when we talk about the immunobiology of asthma, we really look at what cells can we impact? What cells can we impact to improve severe asthma? And the target here is shown is the eosinophil, but in addition, and Nick is gonna cover this quite well, the mast cell and the FC epsilon receptor is very, very important. I'm gonna come back to look at specific aspects of the asthma diathesis and the immunobiology. And I'm doing this from the frame point, from the, from, from the aspect of what you need to know because it impacts on the phenotype and the therapeutic approach. And that is shown in this slide. <clears throat> Pardon me for making such a crazy busy slide, but it is important to understand non-T2 and T2 inflammation. Now, you all probably remember Th2. Th2 referred to a very specific T cell subset. We've now embraced a different concept, the concept of T2 inflammation. It goes beyond, it extends beyond the CD4 T cell. It extends to the eosinophil also. It extends also to the ILC2s. Now, these innate lymphoid cells which have been identified now within the last 10 years are critical because they can integrate both T2 and non-T2 signals to induce the asthma diathesis. So let's talk about T2. T2 inflammation is allergy-driven, atopic, mostly eosinophil-driven. Eosinophils, atopic, T2. Non-T2 seemingly has a signature or an, an immunologic signature that is remarkably different. Here, what we see is the epithelial cell plays a central role. It integrates damage signals. These damage signals that are alarmants, these are molecules secreted by the epithelium, IL-33, TSLP, also uh, IL-25, then interface and interact to affect function on the innate um, uh, lymphoid C2 cell. Now this C2 cell actually can secrete IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13. So there's an integration of non-allergen, non-T2, mediated by the epithelium that has some crosstalk to the eosinophil and IL-4, IL-5 to IL-13 uh, signals. Also, the IL-33 can modulate TH17 and affect neutrophil activity as well as trafficking. So what do you need to know? Two big types of inflammation. T2 inflammation, non-T2. Non-T2, pollutant, bacterial, viral driven, mostly through ILC2s. The reason that's important is there's gonna be new biologics in that space coming out probably within the next two years. Now, let's move over to T2. T2 is going to be eosinophil-driven, atopic, IL-4, IL-5, IL-13 prominent. Guess what? We have biologics in that space. So if you had to say, hey, Panetary, tell me, in 100 patients, how many have this and how many have that? About 60% of patients have a T2 inflammatory signal, while 40% don't. In current approaches, we lack therapy for that non-T2, but it is on the rising. 